A press release on a recently published scientific study has been catching clicks with the headline, Low Calorie Sweeteners Do Not Mean Low Risk for Infants. New research shows the impact diet ingredients have on body weight and gut microbiota. The biggest problem? The infants to which they refer are mouse pups. This is Healthcare Triage News. For a peek into the progress of scientific research, consider the following headlines. Scientific evidence found for the role of stress in hair whitening. Zika vaccine protects both mom and fetus, but mom needs a higher dose when pregnant. Scientists reverse the effects of dementia for the first time ever. Know what all these studies have in common? Just like the headline of the study we're focusing on today, they all imply that the results are human-centered, especially the ones using words like mom and fetus or infants, but all of them were conducted in laboratory rodents. Let me first say that animal research is a useful tool that's advanced our knowledge and our ability to treat illness in both humans and animals. However, there's a tendency to treat the results from animal studies as though they are completely applicable to humans. They often aren't. Dr. Michael Bracken wrote an entire paper on why animal studies are usually poor predictors for humans. He acknowledges that some findings, like the protective effect of penicillin against staph infections, have applied well to both rodents and humans. But it's usually more complicated than that. For example, he points out that Accutane results in birth defects in rabbits, monkeys, and humans, but not in mice or rats and that corticosteroids, a class of steroid hormones used to treat things like asthma and arthritis, can lead to birth defects in many animals, but not in humans. Getting into the why behind these mismatches requires episodes of their own, but for today's purposes, the point is that you can almost never extrapolate data from non-human animals directly to humans. Now, finally, the study from the intro to this episode. Do the research. The press release starts out by claiming the consumption of low-calorie sweeteners during pregnancy results in an offspring with increased body fat and disrupted microbiota. The press release does not mention until nearly the end that these data were not obtained from humans. It also fails to mention, though the authors do point this out in the paper, that body composition of offspring in the long term was more affected by maternal obesity and diet than by maternal consumption of low-calorie sweeteners. You see, all expecting rats became obese prior to pregnancy because they were given a high-fat, high-sucrose diet for 10 weeks before being bred. Then those fat rats, once pregnant, were given either artificial sweeteners or water. The female offspring of the obese rats given low-calorie sweeteners did have higher body fat at weaning, but by 12 to 18 weeks of age, all the offspring had similar fat mass, and it didn't matter whether their mothers had low-calorie sweeteners or not. And overall, the differences that did exist between groups were pretty marginal. By that, I don't mean that they aren't potentially important, but I do mean that they don't warrant the headline, low-calorie sweeteners do not mean low risk for infants. In terms of the microbiota disruptions, we've covered this before. There's a lot of hype surrounding the microbiome that outweighs reality, especially when it comes to nutrition. We need a lot more data, especially in humans, before we get too excited. The evidence of harm from consuming added sugars is much stronger than that for artificial sweeteners. We've covered that before too. So carry on, low calorie sweetener lovers of the world. Hey, did you enjoy this episode? You might enjoy this other episode on the mysteries of the microbiome. There's still a lot to learn. We'd really love it if you'd like it, subscribe down below, and consider supporting the show at patreon.com slash healthcare triage. We'd like to especially thank our research associate, Joe Sevitz, and of course, our Surgeon Admiral, Sam.